What's going on, Workforce? Brian here. And today, we're talking about Dark Knight. And everything Dark Knight. So, let's just get ready to tank this thing. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Controller and Layout Guide. Here, we're going to be talking about how I've positioned all of my abilities on the controller itself. Please hopefully use this as an example of maybe what you can do on your own layout, but at the end of the day, this is just a suggestion. If you haven't checked out my other videos, we have the skills layout, and we're gonna be talking about the PVP and other things all related to the Dark Knight. For any other tanks out there, we are gonna be covering the other tanks here in the next coming weeks, so keep an eye out on the channel for that as well. Links will be in the description below, so let's go ahead and do this thing. As a simple reminder for anybody who's just joining us, under head layout, this is how we've kind of set up everything here. I've got the top hop bar as hop bar three. Now, I don't click on any of these abilities. This is a controller guide after all. But hop bar three is to communicate cooldowns to me, things that I need to make sure that I'm aware of. Thus, I've actually got it at 140%, the largest that it will go just to help communicate that back to me. Then I've got the left cross hop bar, right cross hop bar, and the main cross hop bar with my parameters, and then hop bar two just to help do some emotes and things like that. I have my status effect and my blood gauge right here, so that all in all, when I'm playing the game with my character in the center, with all of these hop bars, I have a good layout and feel for the game in and of itself. I've got my focus, target hop bar, and my enemy list right here, and then my target in and of itself. This gives me a lot of flexibility and it's my preferred layout for tanking and pretty much all my jobs. However, at the end of the day, you gotta do what makes sense and what feels natural to you. If you needed to turn on that hop bar at the top, go to character configuration, hop bar, and then set hop bar three on. And then you can use the HUD layout to position it accordingly. If you're on a PS4 or you don't have a mouse and keyboard to drag and drop your items on to that bar, I recommend using the virtual mouse. Holding L1 and pressing down on the right stick will allow you to use your right stick to move the mouse cursor around and you can use left click to grab and release to move any of these items. It's not the most fluid, but at the end of the day, it does the job. So let's talk about the first top bar up here at the top. I've got Sprint, Salted Earth, Carve and Split, Soul Survivor, Plunge, Dark Arts, The Blackest Knight, and Blood Weapon. Over here in the double cross hop bar left, I've got Dark Mind, Dark Side, Conveillance, and Rampart. Kind of think of this as like some debuff, some kind of helping heal up, as well as I want to make sure Dark Side is on, but because I'm not turning Dark Side on and off, it doesn't necessarily need to be any easily accessible ability. Then on the left cross hop bar, I've got Abysmal Drain, Quidus, Dark Passenger, Dark Arts. One of the reasons why you can see Dark Arts here and Dark Arts here is because Dark Arts impacts and affects each one of these abilities. So I want to make sure that I'm always having the opportunity to Dark Arts those abilities. So Dark Arts Abysmal Drain, Dark Arts Quidus, or Dark Arts Dark Passenger. Continuing on the left, I've got Delirium, Shadow Wall, Low Blow, and Blood Prize. I have Low Blow right here because any job that I play that has a stun is always going to be in this position. Muscle memory is key to success in this game, really in any game specifically, so I want to make sure that no matter what job I'm playing, if I have a stun or the need to stun, it's always in the same spot. On the right side, I've got Soul Eater, Blood Splitter, Carbon Split, and Dark Arts. Again, same philosophy as over here on the left side, is that Dark Arts can enhance Soul Eater, Blood Splitter, and Carbon Split. Then I've got Hard Slash. You can see this is a macro, so let's go ahead and jump into that macro real quick. You can see I have macro icon, hard slash, then hard slash, and then unmend. So what this does is that hard slash, if it's unable to hit because maybe I'm too far away, it's going to use unmend. But do take note or warning, depending on your ping, you might run into an issue where latency has an impact on this, so hard slash might not be landing, and you might be unmending more than you think you should or need to. So use this with caution, as with any macro in the game. Then I've got spinning slash, and then power slash. So just like before, my hate building combo stays the same. A to B to Y. That is my hate building combo. Then I've got siphon strike. So A to X to soul eater or delirium or carbon split. So I've kind of got my damage rotation kind of built up off of this kind of controller motion. 
and then I've got my tank building, which is off of this controller type motion. On the right hand side, I've got a mega potion. This could be anything you want it to be. Unleash, reprisal, and blood weapon. Reprisal being a cross roll skill, low blow being a cross roll skill, rampart being cross roll, commandless being cross roll. Feel free to replace these with any of those cross roll abilities that you have to choose from. And then finally, on my extended cross hop bar, L trigger and then right trigger, you can see these abilities. To make it easy on myself, <laughs> that is, I have it set to hop bar too. So I macro living dead in this case. Now all that is is living dead plus a party message letting the healer know that I've used that ability. Kind of hopefully help call to mind that they need to pay attention, especially if it tricks me into walking dead. Grit, obviously my tank stance. Don't need it all the time, so I just have it there for easy placement. Provoke, if I need to be able to grab an enemy or switch targets while tanking. Soul Survivor. This obviously is a great ability, but with the long cooldown, that's why I have it here in my top hop bar, is that I want to make sure that I use it, but it's not necessarily something that I'm using all the time. Salted Earth Macroed. So, if you haven't seen this ability. So the only reason that I have Salted Earth Macroed is because I use this T targeting command. This makes it easily selectable. So instead of having the ground target itself, just using the ability is going to place it wherever I'm targeting. Then I have Blackest Night, Blood Weapon, and Plunge. I used to have Plunge macro to my main attack. However, when running Royal Menagerie and some of these other fights, I found that it would plunge when I really wasn't wanting it to. So I've moved it to be have, so I moved it out of the macro to have a little bit more control of the ability itself. And then finally on my shared hotbar, the only change that I've made is I've added Sprint to the topmost command. This means that any job that I'm on, I can sprint easily. From a muscle memory perspective, being that it is in the same place on all jobs, makes it easy. And especially because there's no TP cost, you could sprint for days, or at least for several seconds before having to wait. Anyway, that wraps this up for me. My name's Brian, and this is work to game Hopefully this controller guide's been helpful. Hopefully you've gotten something out of it. Hopefully you're able to go and enjoy Dark Knight as a job in the world of Final Fantasy XIV. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope to see you in my next, and until then, take care.